The Erie Current War. Let's find out more about these historic events, tonight, on Project Algerine. There was a time in Erie's past, in which it was at the forefront of a technical revolution. Something, in which many of us take for granted, while going about our day-to-day -day affairs. Lighting, our homes and businesses. Up until then, the only choice was to use gas lamps or fire. But that, was all about to change. In 1879, Thomas Edison made vast improvements to the incandescent light bulb, which would pave the way to making lighting with electricity, just as financially competitive as gas or oil. Erie was about to become one of the earliest electrified cities in the world. To put things into perspective, the spectacle of light seen by 30 million people at the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago doesn't happen for another nine years. This is considered the event which triggered the nationwide electricity revolution. By that time, Erie had electricity for almost a decade. The first electricity generated in Erie County was in the spring of 1884, at an old office in the Erie Ironworks building located on the corner of 12th and French Street. The company manufactured steam engines, which could easily be hooked to a dynamo, which generated the electricity as it spun. Once the necessary parts were obtained, it sat in crates for several weeks, because nobody locally knew how to put it together. That is, until Mr. Lewis, from the Cleveland Brush Company arrived and helped install the 30 lamps, the dynamo was capable of handling. The immediate impact to the factory's production was pretty obvious to everyone. A new company to produce and sell light in Erie was quickly formed. The newly created Erie County Light Company secured a building on Peach Street between 10th and 11th. This building still exists today but has been absorbed into the YMCA facility some time ago. The company immediately brought in two new engines and added another dynamo, this one capable of handling 45 lights. The power station's first commercial customers were two stores bordering along State Street, owned by James Carney and Frank Niebauer. Nobody knew it at the time, but this little power station would become an integral part of Erie's history. Electricity would change Erie forever.
After the Erie Canal extension closed in 1871, the gasworks relocated their facility from 7th and Myrtle Street to the foot of Peach Street and by 1884 they were ready to again place a bid on lighting Erie's streets with oil lamps. But, they lost that bid to the newly formed light company. The Erie County Light Company was contracted by the city to provide street lighting to the citizens of Erie. The street lights would cover several blocks in downtown Erie, from the park to 12th Street and from Peach over to French Street. A new employment opportunity opened up almost overnight. The job of electrical linesmen quickly became one of the most dangerous jobs in the city. On the evening of September 2, 1884, the streetlights in Erie turned on for the first time. The streetlights were an immediate success, and demand for electric light service along those streets soared. It wasn't just streetlights that were attracting attention. Playhouses and theatre groups were also early adopters of this new form of illumination. Many of Erie's early theatres were constructed within a two-block radius of this power station. This area was known as the Theatre District in Erie. The Erie County Electric Company has successfully illuminated downtown Erie. The burgeoning little power plant begins to attract the attention of Thomas Edison and his group of investors. In 1887, the power plant comes under the control of Edison Electric and by 1891, is ready to move to its new location at the corner of East 12th and French Street. Edison and his business partner J.P. Morgan spared no expense in the new facility. The new power plant would employ more than 20 workers and operate non-stop 24 hours per day. The plant was outfitted with two Thomson Houston Arc dynamos to generate the electricity. In a few years, the Thomson Houston Company would merge with Edison Electric and would become known as General Electric. In a display of generosity, the new Edison plant offered to power the public school, which was located directly behind the facility on 11th and French Street. The school, long gone, has been replaced with a parking facility. Edison Electric begins to expand in the area, stringing up over 25,000 feet of new wire in the first year. It seemed as though nothing could slow the growth of the Edison Electric Company. But a man named George Westinghouse was about to change all that. By 1893, the coverage of electricity in Erie was growing larger by the day. Another small power station was constructed at 12th and Myrtle. This was to help with the additional load on the system from nearby industries like Henry Schenck's planing mill, which was located on West 12th and Sassafras Street. You may remember Henry Schenck from the Karkwa and the Algeria farm episodes, as he built the Karkwa clubhouse and also constructed the private stables for William L. Scott's $4,000 imported horse from France. It's also interesting to note, the husband of William L. Scott's daughter was one of the top local investors and the current manager of the power plant. 
power station manager and wealthy investor, Charles Strong, was one of the first residential customers at his home on 6th and Peach Street. Meanwhile, over in Chicago, wealthy industrialist George Westinghouse is displaying his historic light show that will change the world. Westinghouse's use of alternating current allowed for transmission of electricity over longer distances. Unlike Thomas Edison's direct current system, which required substations generating power every few blocks. Erie is still littered with the remains of these old Edison substations. Westinghouse's success in 1893 also hinged on the development of an electric motor, which could run on alternating current. Thanks to Nikola Tesla, that dream became a reality, and alternating current soon became the standard for manufacturing. In the spring of 1894, several investors from the gasworks plant, the same one that lost the contract to illuminate the city ten years prior, formed the Merchants and Manufacturers Electric Light, Heat and Power Company. The power plant was constructed at the foot of French Street and became known locally as the M&M &M Company. Today, the building that housed the dynamos is still standing, and has since been converted into the main branch of the Erie Public Library. The trolley company was also interested in the benefits of electric power and had constructed a powerhouse to use themselves in the old gasworks site. This would provide enough power and allow for expansion. By now, there are two power companies in Erie, one trolley company, and two telephone companies all stringing up new lines and poles throughout the city. The ever-growing amount of power poles and wires that were clogging the streets began to concern many citizens. The fire department also had a reason to be concerned. The overhead wires were making it difficult to reach windows with ladders. It was obvious to everyone that something needed to be done. Around the same time that the illumination of Chicago took place, the Edison Electric Company merged with another company to form General Electric. This new company would not focus on the power generating business. Locally, the power stations would be purchased by Charles Strong, who would continue running the power plant under the name the Erie County Electric Company. The M&M Company and Charles Strong's Erie County Electric Company were both extremely competitive. They would lure away large contracts from each other over the years. Purchasing a light or a lamp for your home was also a bit more difficult, as at the time, there were only two stores in Erie in which to purchase electric items and both were owned by their respective power companies. The M&M Company opened their store on 11th and State Street, while Charles Strong had his lighting store right next door to the power station on 12th Street between State and French. For several years, this was known as the Lighting Corner of Erie. Eventually, the M&M Company began opening more lighting stores. The city still had an issue with the numerous power lines and poles, and the solution came in the form of an underground conduit to run the wires. Beginning around 1912, several streets in downtown Erie installed large underground conduits in which to run their wires. This more modern look would still allow for the trolley to use overhead wires. In 1919, Charles Strong added another power plant to the system. 
this time, near West 5th and Cranberry Street. The power plant's boilers were fed by bordering Cascade Creek. This station took 10 years to construct, due to shortages caused by World War I. Many people assume that Charles Strong built this station specifically to power his own summer estate, which was just north of the new power plant. But, in reality it was to provide power to the already established factories and the 12th Street Corridor. All those electrified factories and foundries employed thousands of local workers over the years and helped make Erie a strong player in the early manufacturing sector of the United States and abroad. Both power companies operated competitively for years in the area without many issues, but like most cities around that time, things were moving towards consolidation. In 1915, the devastating flood of Mill Creek damaged much of downtown Erie, including the power station at 12th and French. Across the street, the old Erie ironworks suffered catastrophic damage to the facility. Dynamite was needed to bring the rest of the building down. A new market house was constructed in its place. The power station that powered Erie's first theatres on Peach Street between 10th and 11th became a theatre itself. It was home to the Erie Playhouse from 1919 through 1927. By 1930, the trolley had ceased operations in Erie due to low ride numbers and increasing maintenance costs. Their power distribution assets were acquired by the M&M Company. On November 8, 1936, Charles Strong passed away at the age of 83 years old. He is buried in William L. Scott's mausoleum in the Erie Cemetery. In the late 1940s, both power companies merged to form the Pennsylvania Electric Company. As fate would have it, in 1951, lightning struck the exact spot where electricity was first generated over 60 years ago. The fire at the Erie Marketplace, located on the southwest corner of 12th and French Street was seen for miles. Eventually, the local newspaper acquired the then decommissioned power plant and moved from their old building over on West 10th Street. The newspaper company operated out of this building till the early 1970s. Around the corner on 11th and State Street, Erie's first lighting store had been converted into a restaurant. In the 1980s this building burned down. The cause was determined to be arson. Throughout the 1970s and 80s, the Pennsylvania Electric Company decommissioned the power plant at the foot of French Street and relocated operations south of the city to a larger facility. Today, most of our electricity is generated very far away from Erie. You've been watching the Erie Current War on Project Algerine.